The motives are threefold for me to change, to overcome predominating sins and to acquire new virtues, or, in scriptural language, to put on the new person who is made after the likeness of Christ. Ephesians 4.24 The three motives are these. The more like Christ I am, the happier I am. The more like Christ I am, the more pleasant are the lives of those around me. The more like Christ I am, the more God is pleased. This is threefold motivation, any single one being sufficient to inspire me, let alone all three. If it's only me that's happier, that will be sufficient. If only the lives of others were made more pleasant, that too is fine. If only God was pleased, that would be more than enough. But it's all three. It's a win-win-win situation. Now Thomas Akempis says this, Oh, if thou didst but consider how much inward peace unto thyself and joy unto others thou shouldst procure by demeaning or diminishing thyself, I suppose thou wouldst be more careful of thy spiritual progress. What then is to stop me forging ahead and making the best use of the time? Why do I vacillate? Why do I delay? One thing comes to mind immediately my own free will. I must choose to change. God will never override my will. I must decide and act on my decision. He gives me endless encouragements with words like, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. There are rewards for every victory in your life. Philippians 4.13, Revelation 2.10 and 22.12 and countless, countless more. Why then? Don't I choose immediately? Two things are suggested by Thomas Akempis' use of that unusual word, demean or diminish. He says this, Consider how much inward peace unto thyself and joy unto others thou shouldst procure by demeaning thyself. He does not mean belittling yourself or doing yourself down, as we say, rubbishing yourself. No, he means dying. To yourself, becoming less. I must decrease and he must increase. John 30, 3, 30. I must make it my job to bless others, not myself. I will be blessed as I bless others. He who loses his life will gain it. What a change it would be if we fully embrace this truth. Matthew 10, 39. One reason that we resist change is our flesh. It doesn't like change, neither the effort nor the experience. It wants safety, comfort, and it sure doesn't want to diminish. And this is because of a lie from the world, from the flesh and from the devil. All of them agree. And the lie is this. Take as much as you can and give as little as you can. You have a limited supply and must preserve your resources. What you give away is gone forever. Now this sounds plausible. Natural resources do run out, but our resources are not natural. They're supernatural. By Christ's way of thinking, the more I give, the more I have. The more I love, the more love I experience. We are transmitters, not containers. Flowing rivers, not water tanks that can run dry. I may tell myself, it's the most normal thing to put myself first. Nobody will benefit if I decrease. I may even become a pious fanatic, and that's never attractive. Yes, helping others is a good thing, of course, and I will help them, but I'm only human. We believe the lie that to lose one's life is to lose. To give away is to become impoverished. Jesus would have nothing to do with those lies. Philippians 2, 5, following. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, became a bondservant. He humbled himself, or emptied himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, 
and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We must change if we are to discover the fullness of Christ. Either he changes or we do, and he's perfect. When we demean or empty ourselves, we are confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And that is our God-given destiny. To the exact degree that I decrease, he will increase. This is an immutable law. May we change our thinking this week and try to outgive one another. Freely we have received, freely let us give.